Welcome to Car Audio Fabrication, the show that reveals the secrets and mysteries of car audio and teaches you the techniques to take your installs to the next level. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this episode. Because in this episode, we're going to be talking about how you can use backlit plexiglass to enhance your install and to integrate a logo or a sponsor into the install. You can use it on sub boxes, you can use it on amp racks, you could even use it on door pods or anything else you could ever imagine in your car audio build. Let's get to it and see how it's done. We are going to begin this project like we begin many of our projects with a template shape. Now I've made this shape using different straight edges and a bunch of quarter inch radiuses. If you want to learn how you can make a shape like this, watch the video on screen with the tutorial playlist of how to make templates. What's awesome about these template shapes is once you've created one, you can use it to create others. So in this case, I'm going to be outlining my original template, but I want to have that angled part of it on both sides of the template that we're going to be using for this project. So I simply trace one way, I flip my template over, and then I'm going to outline the other side. This leaves us with this shape that we're going to be using for this tutorial. To make this shape perfect, we're going to start with cutting within an eighth inch of the outside edge. We're also going to cut out the inside edge of the shape. After we've done that, we can stick our original template on to our new template. Now if you've watched my other tutorial videos, we're going to do this just like we usually do. We load up the flush trim bit and copy the shape of the original template to the new template. Now notice that I'm only cutting the half that corresponds with the original template. We will need to flip the original template over and recopy it to have the mirror image that you see here. The plexiglass that I'm using for this tutorial actually isn't plexiglass at all. It's polycarbonate. I like using polycarbonate because it's stronger, it's more machinable, and I find that it doesn't crack as easily as plexiglass. When cutting the plastic, you're going to want to set the orbital setting on your jigsaw to its maximum value. What this does is it pulls the blade back away from the plastic and only cuts on one side of the stroke. This cuts through the plastic much more easily. To cut the plastic flush, we lay on our new template and then use our flush trim bit on the router. Make sure you take the proper safety precautions for this step because the chips go flying everywhere. You also want to make sure that you leave the protective covering on both sides of the plastic. Once the plastic is cut, you do not want to separate the plastic from your template shape yet. Instead, we're going to start protecting it with masking tape. Flip the pieces over and use a razor knife to cut away the excess masking tape. Next, we are going to wrap our pieces in foam tape. This foam tape is to make a gap between the inside and outside template shape. And since we're going to be using vinyl and vinyl, then we only need one layer of this foam tape. Now if you were using vinyl and carpet, you might need two layers of this foam tape because the carpet is thicker. I'll spare you guys the details, but to make that larger shape, I use the same techniques that I show in my template making series that I linked in the beginning of this video. That link will be down in the description as well so that you guys can check it out. In order to properly integrate the LED lights, we need to make a channel for them to sit in. So here I'm measuring the distance from the center of my router to the outside part of the base. What this allows me to do is I can then make a rail along a line that is offset that distance so that I know where the bit of the router is going to cut. With the rail set up, I can make my first pass with the router using the quarter inch cutting bit, and then I can move the rail a quarter of an inch, and once again make another pass. We repeat this process for all sides of the template shape, and as you can see we have a nice little channel that the LED lights will sit down inside. We are now going to drill two holes. That's what she said. <laughs> this will allow the wiring for the LEDs to pass through the back side, and it will also allow us to push out the template shape after we form it in with body filler. The important steps here, just like the other tutorials, is to make sure that you use a high quality body filler like Rage Gold. You're also going to want to make sure that you do what's called green stage sanding. This means don't apply all the body filler and then wait a day to sand it. Apply the body filler, wait about 15 minutes, and start sanding it immediately. 
Within no time, we'll have a smooth outer shape and we can then use those two holes that we made earlier to push the inner template out of this lower template. With all the foam tape removed, we have this flawless transition. We will now use the 45 degree chamfer bit to create this awesome bevel on the inside edge of our template. Small little details like this are what can really make an install. We will now use our rabbiting bit to make a nice little step that we will then use to our advantage when we go to wrap these pieces with vinyl. For more detail on how to wrap pieces like this, check out the video on screen where I show how I wrap the pieces in my door pod tutorial series. Using these techniques will leave you with this nice perfect transition between these two different templates. Let's move on to actually installing the LEDs. The LED lights that I like to use can be found on eBay by searching the term LED strip lights. What's awesome about these is that you can cut them wherever you need to, so I can cut them to the different lengths. They have this little line next to the soldering points that you can cut, but what I actually like to do is cut those soldering points in half so that I can then daisy chain them together. I use solder to tin the connections, and then I make all the connections between the different strips. Let there be light. These LED strips generally have an adhesive side, and what's nice is the adhesive is actually pretty strong. So you can see here I'm laying all the different LED lights into their individual channels. We can now remove the protective covering from one side of the plastic. In this case I'm doing two because I want to show you guys that with the clear plastic, without it being sanded, it doesn't really transfer the light. We need to sand one side. This is where I like to enter my disclaimer that while you could use a sandblaster to blast one side and make it opaque, you can also do it by hand. I'm simply using sandpaper and sanding at two different angles perpendicular to one another. To block out the lines that we used as guides to make the channels, I'll cut a piece of paper to the inside shape and lay it within the template. I then put in the piece of plexiglass and follow it up by using the outer trim template. If you used a proper gapping technique with the foam tape, the template will be in tight enough that you don't have to worry about it falling out. And there you have it, a beautifully backlit panel that can be used to accent a shop or sponsor logo, or to add flair to a sub box, amp rack, door panel, or any other car audio install. The possibilities are endless. Now, I have a question for all the true fabricators out there. I want to know, have you guys ever used plexiglass in an install before? And if so, what did you use it on? Did you use it on a sub box? Did you use it on door panels? Tell me what you used it on. And if you haven't used it before, do you plan on using this? And if so, what will you use it on in the future? Now, I have to give a special thanks to Shane, Connor, Clint, Russell, and Alejandro, and all the Patreon subscribers. Thank you guys so much for helping support my channel. That's what made this tutorial possible. I appreciate it, thank you. If you wanna learn more about how you can help CAF with tutorials in the future, go to caraudiofabrication.com. To learn more car audio fabrication techniques, check out one of my videos on screen. To learn how you can get exclusive car audio fabrication perks, click the center link at the top of the screen. Finally, if you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you subscribe to my channel. That way you'll be automatically updated when I upload future videos. To the true fabricators, I look forward to hearing the answer to the question of what you plan to use this backlit tutorial technique on in the future. Answer in the comments below.